Hi, I'm Brad Bowman from the Air Force Research Laboratory, and today we're at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Directly behind me is the Apollo 15 Command Module. This year we're celebrating 50 years of sending capsules like these to the moon. They rode on top of the Saturn V, which is the largest rocket that has ever been made or has ever been flown. We recently had the opportunity to go to Edwards Air Force Base in California and the Kennedy Space Center in Florida to find out more about the Air Force's contributions to the F-1 engine that powered the Saturn V rocket. Yeah, the, uh, the story of the F-1 is a, kind of a very interesting one. It's uh, often people kind of focus on the uh, end, end uh, uh, phases of it, especially you know, going to the moon and such. But what people sometimes don't realize is that it took a long, it was a long road. The basic uh, technology of those large engines uh, such as the F-1 was a need that the Air Force identified coming out of the uh, uh, early to mid-50s. And uh, the, uh, the need was addressed by uh, a program called the E-1. And E-1 was a technology demonstrator as, as the lab generally does. So it was not necessarily flight weight. Um, but it demonstrated the, the, but it was flight light. As the technology then was transferred to the F-1, the F-1 was able to spool up that much faster. Um, as these big engines got bigger and bigger, they were often more prone to combustion instability. This is when the energy that is being combusted inside of this chamber creates a runaway effect where the energy cannot be contained and the engine itself often blows up. Resolving that problem was a huge, huge effort. And in fact, it was worrisome to the point where they were worried whether they would have a feasible engine to launch the astronauts to the moon. So the lab was instrumental in, uh, in, in being able to solve that problem. And it was solved in one of our test tents. Unfortunately, at the time, it is the 60s, um, there wasn't much computer modeling and there wasn't much even just understanding of the physics going on, the combustion mechanics, etc. They decided to try out every single design. Those various designs uh, had different characteristics. The characteristics that often were manipulated were the baffle shapes. The number of baffles, the number of sections of the baffles, the, the injector layout. Eventually, through the concerted efforts of uh, both Rocketdyne and the Air Force uh, folks, they, um, they were able to find a solution. Uh, a design that worked, um, and they stuck with it, and, and that uh, then transferred over to the flight engines, the F-1s uh, themselves, which were uh, tested out here in their full flight configuration. So you see that one small step was made possible by AFRL's contribution to the F-1 engine, which allowed the Saturn V to take a giant leap off of the launch pad and into space.